Do you know how easy this is for me? Do you have any fucking idea how easy this is? This is a fucking joke. And I'm sorry you can't do this. I really am, because I wouldn't have to fucking sit here and watch you fumble around and fuck it up. Hello, everyone. In today's video, let's dive into the global markets that are on the rise and bond yields that are on the decline. The Federal Reserve seems to suggest that it might be too early to confirm rate cuts, but conflicting opinions are circulating. So, whom should we trust in this sea of mysteries? We'll explore the intriguing world of dark pool data driving the current market trends, analyze prevailing sentiments, and delve into the historical context leading up to December 2023 and 2024. Additionally, with gold futures hitting record highs, we'll uncover the dynamics behind this precious metal. Join me as we discuss key levels in the S&P 500, explore why the Magnificent Seven appears weak, and unravel what it could mean for your portfolio and trades. Amidst all this, we'll witness the impressive ascent of cryptocurrencies to new highs and explore the ongoing rotation across various market sectors. Is this just the beginning or is it signaling the end? Find out in today's special weekend show covering stocks, commodities, and cryptos. Let's get started. After a fantastic November, are more gains on the horizon for stocks in December? Dow Jones, DIA, up 8.5%, year-to-date S&P 500. SPY, up 19%, year-to-date NASDAQ. QQQ, up 36%, year-to-date. November witnessed a remarkable performance in U.S. stocks, marking the best month in nearly a year and a half. This achievement ranks as the second-best November since the 1980s. Federal Reserve officials have expressed contentment with the current interest rates, indicating a desire to maintain stability at December's meeting. Treasury Secretary Yellen is optimistic about the prospect of a soft landing, minimizing the risk of a sudden surge in unemployment. Bitcoin, BTC, reached its peak for the year, hitting $39,000. The rising annualized interest expense on the U.S. federal debt, nearing $1.1 trillion, is a significant concern. To put it in perspective, surpassing the 2023 defense spending of $821 billion indicates that the U.S. is on track to spend 34% more on interest than on defense. Considering that the U.S. government generated $4.4 trillion in revenue in 2023, the fact that 25% of the receipts for the entire year equate to annual interest expense is alarming. The trajectory of increasing interest expenses appears to be a result of both rising interest rates and declining tax revenue occurring simultaneously. This raises questions about the sustainability of the current financial situation. A clear game plan is crucial to address these challenges involving strategies to manage debt, boost revenue, and ensure fiscal responsibility. Here's a brief overview of the weekly performance of selected stocks in the S&P 500. Tesla, TSLA, plus 1.4% Apple, AAPL, 0.7% Amazon, AMZN, 0.2% Meta, Meta, 4% Alphabet, Google, 3.5% Nvidia, NVDA, 2.1% Microsoft, MSFT, 0.8%, the Wall Street Fear and Greed Index is currently at 67,100, indicating a state of greed in the market. As the sentiment approaches extreme greed territory, it's worth noting that stocks often experience pullbacks in such situations. Investors should be cautious and monitor the market conditions closely. Let's take a look at the upcoming earnings for next week. I'll be keeping a close eye on these, and as you can see, I've marked them in the red box for your reference. Feel free to take a screenshot or save it for this week's earnings. Historically, the stock market has experienced declines after the initial Fed rate cut. The current market sentiment indicates that the first rate cut is anticipated to occur in the middle of 2024. The distinction lies in the fact that the current bear market has been triggered by increasing interest rates. In historical contexts, interest rate cuts usually follow the onset of an economic downturn. The pattern typically involves the economy starting to decline, and then rates are cut to mitigate the impact, as observed in 2001, 2008, and 2020. The present situation presents a unique environment. Game. Let's delve into the charts, starting with the SPY 4-hour chart. Bulls are clearly in charge, and the current rally is robust. Caution is advised for those contemplating short positions. 
If the price breaches 459, further upward movement is anticipated. On the flip side, if it breaks below the trend line and maintains a position under 456.41, it could offer a potential shorting opportunity. But moving on to the next chart, the QQQ 4-hour chart indicates that if the price dips below 387 and breaks the trend line, the next support levels to watch for are at 384 and 380. Now looking at the IWM small caps 4-hour chart, after Friday's impulsive rally, small caps are currently at a resistance point. If the price manages to go above 185.60, my upside target is set at 189. On the downside, I'll be closely watching support levels at 180 and 176. My favorite stock NVIDIA closed the week at 467.65, and now we're keeping a close eye on the 469.0 level. If the price shows strength here, we're holding for a potential move to the 477.0-477.25 range, which is a previous support area that the price might retest. On the other hand, if the price rejects at 469.0, we're holding down to the 462.75463.00 support area from last week. Tesla closed the week with an interesting development. Did you catch a glimpse of the Cybertruck? Share your thoughts below. Now diving into the chart, Tesla has been consolidating in the range of 242 to 234 for the entire week. With this pattern, I'm inclined to anticipate more upside in the coming week especially if the price manages to break above 242. What are your thoughts on the Cybertruck design? Apple, AAPL, closed the week at 191.4. Currently, we're observing a crucial range between 190.85 and 191.50. A potential breakout above 191.50 could pave the way for a retest of last week's highs at 193. On the flip side, if the price breaks below 190.80, we're considering a profit-taking strategy around 189.50. This level has shown a magnetic effect on price movements throughout the past week. What's your take on Apple's upcoming moves? Meta concluded the week at 324.82. Our strategy hinges on the price's interaction with the 325 level. A close above 325 would prompt us to take profit at 327.50, a level where price faced rejection earlier in the week. Should the bullish momentum persist, our next profit-taking target stands at 330.75. On the contrary, if the price rejects the 325 mark, we plan to take profit at the support level around 322. If this support fails to hold, our holding position extends down to 319. Microsoft, MSFT, closed the week at new all-time highs. With shares up 54% in 2023, the bullish trend has been remarkable. Currently, there's no clear upside target identified, However, for the downside, the next support level could be around 357.47. Alphabet Google closed the week with a steady performance. On the 4-hour chart, if the price manages to break above 134.64, it could indicate further upside potential, and considering calls might be a strategic move. Conversely, if the price drops below 131, it could exert downward pressure. Let's delve into the commodities market starting with crude oil. The price action suggests a continued consolidation within a range. If the price manages to revisit the 72 level, we might anticipate another bounce. However, it's crucial to stay vigilant for any news developments related to oil, as unexpected events could trigger further downside movements. The unexpected surge in gold on this Sunday indicates a significant development. Gold doesn't typically experience such abrupt rallies without a reason. The substantial move, with XUSD reaching 2143 on Monday's opening, has now fulfilled all the upside targets for this year, 2033, 2063, and 2143. This unexpected Sunday move has likely left many who shorted gold on their toes. What's your analysis of this remarkable event, and how do you interpret gold's current trajectory? Each time this indicator triggered, your Bitcoin went parabolic reaching its peak within four to 10 months. Despite the general anticipation for the halving event, it's essential to recognize that liquidity might not be waiting. As we head into this week, my BTC forecast is a potential reach to 42,000, followed by a subsequent pullback. Now move forward as we go through the next week and what data we need to be looking at 
And as you can see as we scroll through, we've got ISM services, PMI jolts, job openings, and we also have the non-farm employment week. So this B jobs numbers are coming. Have they weakened? Finally, expectations are 18, 5,000 new jobs, unemployment to stay stagnant at 3.9. Obviously, this is the number where we see a lot to do with the economy and what's going on. It's a lagging stat for sure. But the thing about it is that's what the Fed is also looking for. Will, will they get their higher unemployment and jobs lost? It's, it's a weird world, isn't it, when they really want to try to kill the economy, which is what they've been trying to do now for, what, about a year or so? Hopefully you had a good week. If you did, make sure to subscribe, smash that. Like, thank you for watching. Bye for now.